The Harry Potter series has been a delightful fixation of mine since I was a child, and fortunately, it seems to grow fine with age. The joy that the series brought me is unparalleled to most media that I have dived into. When I was younger, I waited by my window for an owl to deliver my invitation to Hogwarts, using the word mudblood as an insult when my parents took away my PlayStation because I refused to do something. Every time I would see a stick that was far too long for my arms to hold, but was in a similar shape of a broomstick, I would close my eyes and pretend that I was on a Nimbus to realize my punching men in the balls is a sin. Although my parents probably thought I seriously needed help, the walls of limitation that fiction holds crushed me knowing that that option was no longer possible. The books helped me understand the art of detail. Having an antagonist carry so much weight with presence, writing precision to the point of where after reading that sentence, I could close my eyes and paint an ideal picture of the scenario and characters. With the films blowing my brains with creativity, pushing those pre-existing ideas of what I pictured the Wizarding World was into a new direction. The series was a place to escape when times were tough, and even when the world blossomed, it was a place of comfort. And if you were to ask me and my buyer's opinion, I would tell you that they are perfect. But then we get to the games. I have played every single one of the movie adapted games, the Lego games, even the releases of Book of Spells, which merely felt like a mockery. And apart from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Witch Cup, arguably, I walked away unsatisfied, whether it being the minigame feel of a product or playing through Harry's story already knowing the outcome. With the later games in the series having such a short runtime, you were better off just watching the movies. Deathly Hallows Part 2 is exactly TWO HOURS AND 52 MINUTES?! For $49.99, are you fucking insane?! Or receiving a slap in the face. So as my hope dwindled for a Harry Potter game that could fulfill my missed experience of attending Hogwarts when I was younger, a trailer gets leaked on the 2nd of October 2018. A Harry Potter looking IP. I can't find the words to explain how I felt. It was inevitable that one day it would happen. But at first, like 95% of the posting on the internet, I thought it was fan made. The videos to start disappearing like wasps in the winter. Being taken off the internet knowing that it was an active IP still being worked on. Speculation circulated across the internet of what the game was going to be. I wrote a bunch of expectations and predictions, wholeheartedly believing that the franchise would be abused with Harry's face being pasted on every copy to maximize sales. And if that was the case, hoping that it would be in the timeline after Harry's adventure, wanting things like going to Hogsmeade, going to Diagon Alley, storing inventory in Gringotts, using the Polyjuice Potion. Wow. We're identical. Putting a personalized one from Ollivanders, hoping to be able to collect chocolate frog cards, being able to see the events across the Wizarding Schools for the Daily Prophet, getting quests from Harry whilst he works in the Ministry of Magic, playing bloody wizard's chess, and that there isn't an abundance of American voice actors attempting English accents. American voice actors, God bless you. But I have yet to hear a convincing English accent. So, fuck off. I'm only joking. Apart from Nolan North's Cockney Penguin, he can stay. Lights out, rich boy. Will I be able to ride the Hogwarts Express? Etc. The Wizarding World has so much detail, and with JK Rowling refusing to let the ink dry, it keeps extending. But things were silent. Once I found myself with nothing better to do, I would search on the internet to hopefully find something. Worried about the possibility of cancellation, puffing as each event went by, seeing as it was the end of 2018 and the PlayStation experience was cancelled, my hope drew to the big contenders of the summer. It must be E3 2019. Matt Moody. No, Gamescom 2019 must be. Hello, everyone. No, by this point, I was waiting for someone to tell us that they pulled plug. It wasn't happening. But then 2020 rolls along as we're all stuck indoors. Xbox Game Showcase. Hello. No. I started scoffing as every conference passed, and for those who didn't expect the game to be announced, I envy you. But then when my hope was set, the best console showed up. Oh my god. It happened. Fuck off!
and it officially existed. No more daunting expressions when talking about the prospect, no more fear of cancellation of a two-year-old leak. <laughs> it actually existed. It was a game that was going forward. Now, my enthusiasm may seem like I know some form of unknown information about the game. I know as much as you. And that being off the Hogwarts Legacy Frequently Asked question page. But I see people being concerned. So I wrote an additional seven minutes to this script before the 13th of January, trying to reason with people who are questioning Avalanche software and their releases for the past decade under the Disney umbrella of excrement, trying to reason with those who were disappointed that it wasn't Avalanche Studios developing the game instead, trying not to have people question Avalanche software skills as developers, talking about the recent changes to their staff, talking about how the game.co.uk pre-order confirms that it isn't a game for kids to give us who have spent years adoring the series a chance of enjoyment, breaking away from their last releases to give them a chance to build optimism, which is something I wholeheartedly stand by. And in summary, the priority of that script was the only requirement I expect is that the law of the wizarding world is handled with care. Is kind of necessary? Uh, it doesn't look like it, unless that's not the one thing below. But to have a fresh take, by all means, please, what's the point of creating if you don't? But in saying that, the Harry Potter franchise to me is parallel with how fans of Star Wars care and love the franchise so much. And the way that the people in control may not try to polish the turd. <laughs> they have no problem with selling it. My decision is already made of purchasing it. But luckily enough, I haven't had any bad experiences with the Harry Potter series and my purchases. Benito! No, fuck off. But Avalanche Software could just do that. It could release a lackluster game, knowing people like myself are going to purchase the title regardless. And then I see this. <coughs> now, yes, I would like to have a copy of the game tomorrow. In fact, as sad as it is, and it really freaking is sad, and I'd personally like to blame it on the production of this video. I have had two dreams about the game, with the latest being the other night of me having a disc copy on my PlayStation 4. The game is living in my mind rent-free at this point, but the fact they want to put more time into the product to make sure it's everything they want to be, to me speaks levels far beyond the back catalogue of releases. There is pressure. In fact, that's an understatement. But I would like to imagine that Port Key Games love the name, by the way. <laughs> are keeping a close eye on the project. Reportedly, over 1,000 people have worked on the title, making sure that the Harry Potter franchise isn't tarnished in any way. We'll just have to wait for the delivery. With the delay meaning that, fingers crossed, I will have a disc version of the PlayStation 5 by the time Hogwarts Legacy comes out. Just give me a disc version of the PlayStation 5. <coughs> the reveal trailer looks more than phenomenal. The shades, the textures, the courtyard. This is what the game looked like two and a half years ago, recorded through a phone. And now development has been extended for another year? There is too much in the wizarding world to make the game stale. There is already so much to play with pre-Harry's attendance at Hogwarts. I have told my small circle of people, the day Hogwarts Legacy releases, I will not be present for at least a week. Someone's birthday? Ha, that's cute. Someone's having a baby? Unless it's mine? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Weddings are out of the question. I lack optimism for them anyway. But regardless, I have never been so excited for a game. I cannot wait to see my character in the House of Ravenclaw daring to discover, completing every quest that the game has to offer, embarking on a dangerous journey to uncover the hidden truth of the wizarding world. My hopes may be above board. With my expectations, I'm destined to fail. And it can rather go two ways. It can be everything I want it to be, or it can be a total disaster. But. We'll have to give Avalanche, Porky Games, Warner Brothers, who will be taking far too much of my money next year, an opportunity. But with that being said, I'm just happy that the game actually exists. So thank you. But don't fuck it up!